On Friday night, air defense systems on duty destroyed 18 Ukrainian drones over four regions of Russia, the Russian Defense Ministry reported. The largest number of UAVs, 11 aircraft-type UAVs, were shot down over the territory of the Bryansk region. The military destroyed four more drones over the Kaluga region, two over the territory of the Republic of Crimea, and one over the Belgorod region. Earlier, Bryansk region governor Alexander Bogomaz reported that Russian military shot down 11 Ukrainian armed forces drones over the region's territory. According to him, there were no casualties or damage. He also thanked the Russian armed forces. But in Crimea, explosions rumbled near the airfield of Kirovsko, as well as near the city of Dzankoy. Three populated points in our region were attacked by UAVs. According to preliminary data, there are no casualties. In the village of Petrovka in the Belgorod region, as a result of the dropping of explosive devices from a UAV, the roof of a private house was breached, the windows were blown out. The owner of the house refused medical help. The neighbor's house was completely burnt. In the village of Bochkovka, as a result of the fall of the drone with subsequent detonation, the premises on the territory of the agricultural enterprise were damaged. As a result of an FPV drone attack, the roof of a private house was broken in the village of Gorkovsky, Graveronsk city district. Ukrainian military in the Kursk region closed the cauldron, in which about 3,000 Russian soldiers found themselves, writes Bild. Several days ago, the Ukrainian armed forces managed to occupy the village of Krasnoktyabrskoy, as a result of which the eastern border of the cauldron, which is blocked from the west by the state border, and from the north by the Syme River, was completely closed, notes Bild military observer Julian Repke, citing satellite data. According to the publication sources familiar with the situation, the area of the cauldron could be about 700 square kilometers. We are talking about an area of 20 by 35 kilometers, which was cut off from full supplies after the Ukrainian armed forces blew up three bridges over the Syme River with strikes from Himars systems and with the help of aviation, on August 16, 18 and 19. The bulk of the encircled Russian military is in the villages of Tyatkino and Glushkovo, a thousand in each, and another thousand are along the border, a build source indicated earlier. The cauldron was closed even though the Russian military managed to drive the Ukrainian armed forces out of the village of Koronivo, which had been under Kiev's control since August 20, along with the railway station of the same name, Repki notes. To supply the group that was under threat of encirclement, the Russian armed forces are building pontoon bridges across the Syme, which, however, are being attacked by the Ukrainian armed forces. On August 19, the crossing between the villages of Zvanoy and Glushkovo was destroyed. On August 27, the Russian military built another crossing in Zvanoy, it is located approximately 2 kilometers from the destroyed bridge across the Syme, Radio Liberty notes with reference to satellite images. At least two pontoon bridges had previously been attacked by the Ukrainian armed forces. For a full-fledged defense of the Kursk region and the return of lost territories, the Russian Defense Ministry needs about 50,000 soldiers, military analyst Yen Matveyev previously estimated. But the Kremlin has no plans to redeploy forces from the front in Donbass, where the Russian army has broken through Ukrainian defenses and, according to Deep State, has managed to seize 200 square kilometers of territory since the beginning of August, for times more than a month earlier. Conscripts will be sent to the Kursk region, Bloomberg sources close to the Kremlin previously reported. According to Meduza's sources close to the Russian government, the fighting near Kursk will continue for several months, and this is an optimistic assessment. Putin is focused on ensuring the collapse of the Ukrainian state, after which, in his view, the issues of the territories under Kiev's control will automatically become irrelevant, says Tatyana Stanovea, a senior fellow at the Carnegie Russia Eurasia Center. While this is undoubtedly a blow to the Kremlin's reputation, it is unlikely to cause a significant increase in social or political discontent among the population, Stanovea says. 
A Ukrainian attack could actually lead to an increase in anti-Ukrainian and anti-Western sentiment.